There are so many mobile game masterpieces out there. These developers struck gold on their first try and achieved instant success. But once they got the tiniest taste of glory, they did exactly what I'm doing right now. They made a sequel. Some of these sequels released less than a year after the first game, while others took the chance to cash in on the sequel hype a decade later. Whatever the case is, a mobile game sequel always tried to do something unique and interesting compared to the original, while trying to stay just as enjoyable at the same time. But the question is, did they do it? Was it necessary to make the sequel, or did they fail with an obvious cash grab? That's what we're here to find out as we are ranking every mobile game sequel. I try my best to find direct predecessors to each game, even if the title doesn't have a 2 in it. The games we are covering today are Cut the Rope 2, Doodle Jump 2, Temple Run 2, Fruit Ninja 2, Trivia Crack 2, Where's My Water 2, Hungry Shark World, Rolling Sky 2, Angry Birds 2, Mega Run, Jetpack Joyride 2, Shadow Fight 3, Geometry Dash Meltdown, Crossy Road Castle, Monument Valley 2, Hill Climb Racing 2, Doodle Devil, My Singing Monsters Dawn of Fire, Dumb Ways to Die 2, Plants vs. Zombies 2, and Balloons TD6. Now, without further ado, let's find out which of these deserved a second plunder, and which one should have stayed as a one-hit wonder. Omnom, um, I love you so freaking much, and I'm gonna love pretty much any game you're in. Cut the Rope 2 at its surface is virtually just more of the same. Get the candied Omnom, collect 3 stars, play every level. But there were a lot of cool changes too. Omnom is no longer stagnant, he's just as movable as the candy. There's more than just 3 star opportunities with new challenges. And who could forget the new little characters you meet along the journey? I'm thinking of calling them the Nom Boys. Let me know what you think of the name. I love my little Nom Boys, but sadly I only met a few during my short revisit of this game. I'm definitely going to rank all the Cutthroat games at some point, so we'll save it for then. But I just want to say how much I love the blue Nom Boy. Just listen to him. I can't ignore the energy system. We all know how much those suck, but nearly every modern game has it, so it's going to get old to dock points for it here. This game is amazing, and it has a ton of new features and reasons to play it but it definitely lost some of the charm from the original. I think I'll say A tier. So Doodle Jump 2 came out in 2020, which gets me scared right off the bat. Let me remind you that that is 11 years after the first one. While I'd love to accuse them of trying to reignite a dead flame, let's actually play it before we criticize it. At a first glance, it looks nearly identical to the original. I can't believe I'm using tilt controls in 2023. I guarantee this will be the only game to have that. I'm pretty sure these platforms are bigger, but otherwise it's pretty dang similar. However, the new feature is a leveling up system. Collecting stars in each level bumps you up to the next one. It seemed lame until I scrolled through them. You can see how each one changed the aesthetic, platforms, enemies, everything. I like the first, and I appreciate the pick up and play nature of it, but there really isn't much of a point to getting a good score in it. They've given us something to do here, and I appreciate that. Plus, no energy system. Congratulations, Doodle Jump. In the end, it is just Doodle Jump, but hey, not a bad job at all. B tier. There's no freaking way Temple Run 2 has tilt controls. I just made a promise to the little Millies that it wouldn't. What do you mean I made this joke last time? I don't even make jokes. If I say something that seems funny, that's your fault, not mine. Temple Run 2 is, again, just more Temple Run, if you could not get your fix from the first one. The best thing they've done here is add a bunch of maps. A simple change of scenery and obstacles is a surefire way to keep a game like this fresh. But they added stuff like characters, and all I can think is, who cares? Okay, never mind. Freaking Usain Bolt? That is so perfect and funny. Well done, Temple Run 2. But anyways, back to the gameplay. At first I was really enjoying myself, but I just kept playing and playing and playing. I couldn't be killed. This game's got the baby slow speed of Subway Surfers, so it's impossible to die. Wait, what are you doing? Stop watching. Don't watch this part. Stop. So it's really hard to die. And it's just way more boring than the original. In that game, you are at lightning speed after a few seconds, and it makes it much more intense and difficult. Here, I'm more hoping to die than anything. You tried your best Temple Run 2, but I think I'd rather play Temple Run Wizard of Oz if you don't mind. C tier. I ended up enjoying Fruit Ninja more than I thought I would, so I'm excited to see what changes were made for the sequel. Similarly to Temple Run 2, there are characters and more to unlock while you play. So that's really just a wonderful new incentive. It seemed like it was more level structured, but once I beat all the levels presented to me, I got dropped in this menu. Here's a fun challenge. Can you figure out what button I should press to play the game? Give up? It's a trick question. All I can do is arcade plus and events. That's right. The weird level structure lasts just for the tutorial. And the only way to play classic mode is in the events tab. That is just dumb. There was a guitar hero event and mini game mode that were fun ideas, but pretty bland. Like why would anyone play these things more than once? 
I can see their incentives to keep players. There's even a freaking battle pass and fruit ninja now. Just let me play some classic mode. I don't care about this other crap. D tier. I was not blown away by Trivia Crack the first time, but maybe they've redeemed themselves. I can't even play without logging in. Don't you just love playing games? All right, we're up against Eddie Carter. What a dwee, we got this. What movie has an elf in it? Man, this is tough. I'm just gonna close my eyes and pick one. Ah, that was close. Which state is this? Uh, uh, do math? Uh, actually, I'm a genius, so that's pretty easy. You know what? I think I will watch a video to do better in a competition. Thanks, Trivia Crack 2. I finally found a game with no ads. You did? That must be nice. I sure haven't yet. I'm honestly offended by these questions, so I started a new game. How many months does it take for a baby's kneecaps to form? What do I look like? Some sort of baby? Don't answer that. My kneecaps formed like years ago. I don't freaking know. There are apparently some cool new modes, a battle pass, and more microtransactions than your wallet can handle. I have yet to see why this deserved a sequel, so I have no problem slapping this one in D tier as well. <sighs> I just love high quality cutscenes. Swampy is back, and he's brought some friends with him. Who is she? Now I know you all wanted to see the sexy alligator take a bath like Swampy, but each character gets their own mechanic. Allie needs steam, and Cranky needs poison. It's a fun switch up from the previous water only mechanic. There's tons of challenges in each level too, which makes you complete these levels in entirely new ways. Honestly, this is the best sequel we've seen yet. The icing on the cake is there are no ads and no energy system. This is a pretty old game, but I'm still shocked about that. If you love the original, I have no doubt you're going to love Where's My Water too. It's just more of what you love. I'm saying S tier. I bought this game for my Switch, so you can probably guess just how much I love it. The thing is, on the Switch, you get to unlock all the characters organically, which is really nice, and there aren't any microtransactions. Wish I could say the same for this one. Hungry Shark World is a new take on the Hungry Shark Evolution universe. New art style, new locations, new items, same awesome shark killing action. I would definitely recommend the console version over the mobile one, but if you just can't get enough of the first game, you're definitely going to love this one too. The new sharks are so fun, just look at this guy. That alone deserves an A tier. Hey, remember Rolling Sky? You know, bright red ball, plays in TikTok compilations, fun right? Did you know it got a sequel? Exciting, I know. Well, here it... I, I downloaded the right game, right? Ladies and gentlemen, I have made the discovery of a lifetime here with Rolling Sky 2. You might be immediately thrown off by this, but just look at that. This is like art compared to the first. Look at the first game. Now this one. Now back to the first one. Now this one. The visuals are amazing. The music is really good too. The red ball is a little boy now. I didn't think much of the first one, but man, this is cool. Good luck finding a Family Guy clip to pair with this one. Uh, Chris, that very attractive girl just asked you out and you said no. Oh, sorry, Brian. She just doesn't do it for me. It certainly has its flaws, but I will never get over how blown away I am by this. I think they should have called it something else. Like, sure, the gameplay is similar, but this ain't no dang sequel to the Bounty Red Ball game. I say B tier. Not amazing, but a definite improvement in my eyes. It's probably a little unfair for me to rank Angry Birds 2 since I play it every day. However, in a way it's more than fair since I have plenty of experience with it. Let me ask you this. Have you ever wanted to play an Angry Birds game until the end of time? Until the sun explodes and the universe ceases to exist? Then you should play Angry Birds 2! I don't actually know how many levels there are in the game, but I made it to level 1000 and call it quits. I really liked the levels for a while, but for some reason I got really sad by how boring level 1000 was, so I gave up. Still, the new mechanic of choosing the bird you want to use and playing through multiple stages in each level creates a brand new challenge. There are a ton of new side modes, none of which are that exciting, but for some reason collecting different hat sets is really fun to me. Again, I don't know why, but they just are. The events are really fun too. I love the hat events. You're only allowed to bring in birds with the required hats and can collect rewards from being a set of levels. It's awesome. The classic flock returns, and three new birds are here too. I don't know if this game can compare to the classic Angry Birds titles, but I do think it offers a fun experience that I love coming back to again and again. S tier. I covered Mega Jump in my previous mobile game video, but what I really wanted to try again was Mega Run. It's not necessarily a sequel, but it does immediately follow up the past title. Move over Mario, you don't even compare to Redford. Look at his little run. <laughs> 
He's just so cute. All of the characters are dang cute. There's an auto runner with tons of power ups, a crazy amount of worlds, and plenty of stars and gems to collect. For some reason I'm only allowed to start on world 2, so enjoy the world 2 level gameplay I've got for you. It is leagues more enjoyable than Mega Jump, but I can't deny that I got bored pretty quick. It's fun and cute enough, so I'll still give it a C tier. Jetpack Joyride just got a sequel not too long ago, exclusively on Apple Arcade. Look Android users, you're jealous. It's understandable. Oh, what, what exclusive games do you have? Oh? You don't have any? Aw, oh, poor little thing. You realize this is all your fault for buying an Android device, don't you? You realize how inferior you are, right? GOOD! <laughs> oh, I hate you stupid little Android idiots. The first thing I noticed were the updated graphics. No more pixel art, I guess. And it's level based, of course. For this game, I think it works since each level gets a bit longer and surviving gets a bit more difficult. Apple Arcade games don't have in-app purchases, but man, this game has currencies like you wouldn't believe. I like the additions, I like the classic gameplay, and I think this is a fine sequel. I'm torn trying to decide if it lives up to the original though. The classic is just so great, I don't know if the level structure is good enough to quite compare. I think I'm going to have to stick with the original and go with A tier then. Shadow Fight 2 was so cool, but I am curious to see how a sequel could improve on it. There's actually a fourth game too, but I think we should stay in order for now. So far, I get to make my own character and download data archives. NICE! Man, do I love high quality cutscenes. My favorite thing to do in a mobile game is watch people fight. Really awesome. Anyways, I thought the whole point of Shadow Fight was that we are shadows. So creating a character here is really concerning to me. And sadly, my suspicions were accurate. The only interesting part of your game is gone! What is wrong with you people? But wait, there is an upside. Guys! Amazon Prime is coming to Shadow Fight! Oh my god! What the freak does that even mean? Yep, now we have booster packs, generic enemies, and a downgraded poor man's Mortal Kombat. Now let's be fair, for a mobile game this looks absolutely incredible. If you like the combat from the first, there have been improvements. But man, this just isn't Shadow Fight anymore, you know? It's still fun, but not the same. B tier. Also, this thing's like a million gigabytes. Get off my phone now! Love Geometry Dash? Well, for some reason that I'm not completely sure of, there are a few little bonus games that came out after it with new levels. Meltdown and Sub-Zero are pretty interchangeable, but Meltdown came out first, so we'll do that one. Three unique levels are in both of these new games. They're towards the easier side, so maybe that's why they weren't added to the original Geometry Dash? Who knows? The music is incredible, big surprise. The levels are great too, of course they are. But you know, this can't be S. The original is S, with way better levels and more of them too. But I can't go lower than A because it is Geometry Dash. Crossy Road Castle is another not really sequel, sequel. You could make the argument that Disney Crossy Road is more of a sequel than this. Castle has a completely different gameplay style, with the only similarity being its characters and endless nature. Now you traverse through a castle, completing floors and beating bosses. Surprisingly, it's more fun than you'd think. Hey, hey, Android users? Aw, oh, did Widow Baby want to play this one too? Widow Baby spit up after hearing this is an Apple Arcade exclusive. Grow up! There are tons of castles, levels, and characters. And if you are a loser Android user, you can actually check out my old gameplay videos on the game. It's surprisingly got a ton of views. Mostly from Android users, funny enough. If only they knew how much fun I just made of them. Castle's a fun take on the Crossroads series, but sure as hell ain't as good as the original. A tier. In our lifetime, we're lucky to see a mobile game like Monument Valley come and go. But to get two mobile games like Monument Valley, now we're just getting spoiled. Just in the short 20 minutes I played of this game, there were so many cool moments and uh, it's just a great game. I want to keep playing so bad, but I have a bunch more games to play. We all know these games are masterpieces, so it should be no surprise that Monument Valley 2 is going in S tier. Remember how this game is called Hill Climb Racing? Oh yeah, I guess we should probably add racing, huh? You think? Hill Climb Racing 2 has a major focus on racing, while still gives you a fun new vehicles and crazy new terrains. I actually played this for a bit when it first released, so I had a few nice cars to play with here. I'm also decked out in my Santa outfit, looking fresher than ever. I know, I'm jealous. I really love the chill, endless gameplay of the first, but it is fun actually racing people here. There are some fun modes, but the game is clearly pretty dead, and I can see why. These types of games get old quick, and after my quick playthrough for the video, I'm more than satisfied. Another middle of the road, B tier. 
I said middle of the road. If you like Doodle God, then you're gonna love Doodle Devil. Now you get to combine elements, but in an evil kind of way. The day I recorded this gameplay, I'd just gotten home from watching Guardians of the Galaxy 3. I didn't know who to go with since Justin hates Marvel, but thankfully his dad really likes Guardians. So I took Justin's dad with me to go see the movie. Me and John, oh, his name is John by the way, I just call him John. We had a great time at the movie. Sadly, I didn't get to see much of the movie if you know what I mean. That's right, I went all the freaking way with Justin's dad in the theater, and it was awesome. Let's just say I did a little devil twice today. Yeah, anyways, we both actually did want to see the movie, so we're going to try again tomorrow. I swear to God though, if John gives me the eyes again, I ain't going to be able to hold back. The point of the story is, John gets the devil on me doodling, so go out there and have sex with your friend's dad. C tier. My Singing Monsters Babies, you say? You got it, buddy. That's right, there's another My Singing Monsters game. I should also probably take the opportunity to apologize to everyone very upset with me about my original ranking. Well, the main reason I'm apologizing is... Uh... Well, it's gonna happen again. Similarly to Geometry Dash Meltdown, I feel like this is just more of the same again. If you wanted to start fresh in My Singing Monsters, then this is probably a dream come true. To me though, I see no reason this would be any better or worse than the original. I can't possibly get far enough in the game before making this video to give it a fair ranking, so it goes in B, just like its predecessor. Speaking of apologizing, I was a little surprised to see the uproar from putting Dumb Ways to Die in D tier. I still stand by that, but maybe we can reconcile a bit by trying out the sequel? I sure hope so, because this is a major improvement compared to the first. The animations are all really well done, there are a ton of unique minigames with even some themed ones, there's an overworld with unlockable characters, yeah, I just can't believe how great of a little minigame pack this is. I apologize to the My Singing Monsters fans, but I hope all of you dumb ways to die hards out there appreciate me putting this one in S tier. What an underdog story. I won't spend too long on PVC2. I've done a big video on the Plants vs. Zombies games already, so if you want to hear my thoughts about this game and all the others in the series, feel free to check it out. I'm putting it in S, and here's why. There are an insane amount of new plants and zombies, a bunch of new worlds and level themes, and new modes like PvP. It has a different feel compared to the original, but that's a good thing. A more fast-paced, generally challenging game with fun new content is an easy S tier in my book. Well, I guess it's time. Some people may say this is saving the best for last. I'd probably say I've been putting this one off more than anything, but regardless, we gotta rank Bloons TD6. I wasn't impressed by 5, but people have assured me that this was the superior title. And guys, I finally get it. I feel like Frank from Always Sunny when he finally understands gay people. I finally understand why people like balloons! I was immediately addicted and I played two full maps, popping balloons, spawning monkeys, it was great! The style is definitely much better than the last one, this game looks really great too. I had some rough moments like my first mob, but otherwise I did pretty good, I think. <laughs> I would love to keep playing it in my spare time. I'm not sure if I actually will or not, but I'm seriously considering it. Which is more than I can say for most of these games here, sadly. A nice S to round out the list. Well, let's answer that question. Do these classic game sequels hold up to the original, or is it nothing more than a cash grab? Well, I don't know. There were a lot of pretty boring to pretty bad ones, I'd say. The stuff in S and A were pretty enjoyable, but there were too many of these that just saddened me. In a way, creating a sequel to an amazing game ruins the reputation of the first. Imagine if they made a Mario 2! Stuff like Where's My Water and Monument Valley really deserved a new installment, but most of these? They probably don't need to exist. Angerbirds 2? Fun, but unnecessary. Hungry Shark World? I love it, but it's not far from the first one. And don't get me started on Trivia Crack 2 and Fruit Ninja 2. I'm surprised there aren't more Ds, but looking at that B column says it all. Every game here is mediocre. I bet you couldn't even remember half of the ones I talked about without looking at your screen. Trust me, I can't either. What's worse than making a bad game is tarnishing the reputation of a good game. I'd have to say some of the stuff in B left that impression on me. I think less of the Shadow Fight series, all thanks to its lackluster follow-up. So learn your lesson, people! Do something good once and move on! Anyways, I'll look forward to my 6th Angry Birds video and ooh, gotta do Classic Mobile Games 3 now! Thank you so very much for watching. This probably wasn't as exciting as my first mobile game video, but I hope you still enjoyed seeing some of these sequels. Like, I bet you didn't know Rolling Sky 2 existed, did you? Thank you to my members Groth One Finger, Cobalt Chrome E, Patrick Byer Jean, Hono Maki, and our newest member Jacob BL, who just became a member after the Toons video, so thank you very much, I sincerely appreciate it. If you want to directly support me and get a shout out at the end of my videos, please consider becoming a member. Join my Discord. I gotta get my list ready for Classic Mobile Games 3, and I need your help. Just leave your suggestions there so I can easily find them. Let me know if this sequel lived up to the hype. 
Except, don't say that it didn't. Just say that I did. That's it. I'm deleting every comment that doesn't say it didn't lead up to the hype. You're gonna feed my narrative. You're gonna feed my narrative. Got it! Aw, oh, did little baby wanna play this one too? Little baby spit up after hearing about his Apple Arcade exclusive. Grow up! <laughs> Grow up! Grow the freak up right now! Grow the freak up, loser! Ha ha ha.